up dudes it's Gaz and welcome back to the Warframe video so today we're talking about a big buff that happened in the Whispers in the Wall update that I don't see anybody really talking about with these changes you'll be able to jump through the mission spamming AOE like if you actually had prime sure footed without logging in for 400 days so we'll be going over that today the heavy arc wing gun buffs and just going over viewing that and showing a live gameplay of how this actually works in an actual mission but before we get into it, make sure you're a sub this channel. We do daily Warframe video uploads. Lots of recent subs here. Welcome to the channel, guys. I'll make sure that that sub is worth it to you with all this content. Also, hit that like button as well so more people can see this video uh, and spread the information. All right, so the idea of today's video will be showing you how to use some of these new buffs that like no one's talking about to spam AOE in low-level missions like you've always wanted to without Prime Sure Footed. Now, there are ways to make Prime Sure Footed like Walmart version with multiple mod slots, but today we're just going to be using a new uh, feature added with the Heavy Arcwing Gun. Basically, what DE did is when you call Heavy Arcwing Gun down in your mission now, you get 2,000 Overguard, and that will last until it goes away. The calling down of that Overguard has a 60-second cooldown, so once every minute you can get 2,000 Overguard, uh, you have a Heavy Launcher, and also they massively buff the damage of a bunch of these Arcwing Guns, too. We're going to go over all that stuff. But the way it works, basically, is that you can just take off Prime Sure Footed. If you, or if you don't have Prime Sure Footed, you can do the same thing that all those other guys are doing in your mission without it. And we're going to show that in a gameplay session here as well. So let's just, let's just jump into the mission and show you how this works. I just took off Prime Sure Footed. I'm going to be spamming AoE. Uh, this should go relatively smoothly. Now, uh, the thing here is that Overguard is going to make it where you're immune to, I believe, all statuses. Not sure if it's everything in the game, but it should be like, it's at least knockdowns and like, you know, stuff like that. So if we drop our heavy arc wing gun down, even with no prime sure footed, we will spam a rocket launcher at our feet and we will not get knocked over. I think DE realized that uh, heavy arc wing guns are not really the most desirable things to run in this game and they're trying to change that up. Now there's still some downsides to them. I'm going to show you that right now. When you have a heavy arc wing gun equipped, you move slower. Like you, you actually, you, I think you fall faster, you cannot jump as high as well. So you are actually slower. Now let's go ahead and, and use this admission. So here I am right now, 400 health. I call down the heavy arc wing gun, 2,000 overguard, and now I'm going to spam rockets to my feet. I will not get knocked over. No prime sure footed needed. So yeah, you could just do this uh, in your you know your lower level missions. Now, if, the, if an enemy is able to shoot you for 2,000 damage, you will lose your overguard. You know, start getting knocked over again. But you know if you're spamming AOE through walls, they probably shouldn't be able to see you anyway. So the Kuva Grattler right here got a pretty sizable buff actually the damage of the kuva grattler uh direct hit went up and the damage of the explosion also went up too so we're talking a lot bigger damage here now some of the things about heavy arc wing guns they are lacking some of the more powerful mods like we don't have any galvanized mods for example we don't really have any bane mods for uh heavy arc wing guns we're pretty much just dealing with some really basic mods and some lower like some really low stat number mods too on the multi-shot i believe it's like 30 or 40 percent multi-shot uh for a high rank mod so yeah not exactly the most exciting now we have 2300 overguard somehow i guess frost would hit me with his four so there's other ways to get overguard in this game but yeah heavy arc wing guns do this at default now uh once we go over some of the changes that were made uh unfortunately it looks like this mission is lagging out unfortunately but um as you can see we're growing through it we're pretty much just completely destroying the mission uh, this will work on nearly any frame. I've got energized munitions on Mirage just to spam some shots. Well, I think it's gigantic. And we're just waiting for our teammates to load into the mission, really. But yeah, as far as the damage numbers themselves, weapons like the uh, Mazlon got a 50% damage buff, and some of the weapons like the Dual Decurion got literally double damage. So they weren't being really gun shy with those buffs. And if, if we get some new powerful uh, Arcwing, or Arcwing gun mods, I think that they can become an actual weapon you might be pulling out. Uh, willingly, not just because you're forced to for the profit taker. So, as you see right here, it looks like I have Prime Sturm Footed equipped. I just ran through the whole mission spam AoE the entire time. You, you might as well think I have Prime Sturm Footed. Now, there's other ways to, you know, have a pseudo Prime Sturm Footed, like being Revenant. But yeah, any frame can do this now. Just be aware that, you know, if you get shot at, you're going to lose it, and you're going to have to recast your heavy gun. So, it should have been a minute at this point. Also, a reminder, the, uh, the, the Overguard will not go above 2,000. The cap of it is 2,000. So if, if you go up, if you're already above 2,000, rec recalling down the Heavy Arc Wing Gun will not give you more, unfortunately. But yeah, pretty easy stuff here. The Heavy Arc Wing Gun ammo is relatively uh, free as well. And we beat that mission like we had Prime Sure Footed, even though we didn't have it equipped. 
Now let's go over some of these buffs, the actual numbers that were changed here. And I'll take my Garuda part. Now as far as what was actually changed, let's go over the uh, changes to heavy Arcwing guns in general. Because there's quite a few on here. Alright, so we've got the heavy Arcwing gun deployer changes. With the various buffs and adjustments we've made to Warframe weapons over the years, a common question we see in response is, but what about heavy Arcwing guns? These heavy weapons are meant to be heavy hitters, but arguably have been overshadowed by the primary and secondary guns in your arsenal. To address this feedback, we have made the following changes. Okay, so these are all the changes they made to the heavy Arcwing guns. So the one we just talked about, using an arc, uh, an arc gun deployer will give you 2,000 overguard. The effect is a 60 second cooldown, and the overguard is capped at 2,000. So redeploying the Arcwing gun, we'll just refresh it up to the 2,000 cap. As far as the actual buff to these weapons, let's go over what numbers were changed here. Overall, most heavy Arcwing guns uh, have their damage doubled. Some of them have had also received buffs to the Arcwing versions, which will be indicated below. So, reminder, there's a heavy Arcwing gun version of these weapons, and there's also a normal Arcwing version of these weapons. So let's just go, and sh go ahead and show how you can tell the difference between that. So, uh, this, it's like in, in, in space, here's the stats of the Mandanel. In mission, the Mandanel is going to have different stats, like those stats right there. Calling it down in mission is considered heavy Arcwing gun. In space, it's called... Arcwing, and hopefully eventually remove this stuff from the game. So 73% crit chance of the Kuba Grattler in space, 73 on the ground too. So they're not going to be really different in a lot of situations, but in some of the situations they will be different. But it's continuing on here. Um, there's also going to be some change. So because of this, they have added some damage reduction to the Profit Taker. So uh, before we have added 50% DR to the, the Profit Taker from heavy Arcwing guns. Since these weapons have had their damage buffed, the resistances keep these fights the same difficulty as before. So the Profit Taker clear time should not be any different. But do keep in mind that some of these numbers, they said they added DR to it, but also some of these numbers are pretty big changes. So next time you have a double credit weekend, I'm going to try the Profit Taker for sure. Exceptions. The Kuba Grattler, uh, normal Grattler, Mazlan and Kubayanga have unique damage resistance values against the Profit Taker. When these are adjusted to keep their damage output the same against these foes, as these weapons will not have their damage doubled. The amount of damage resistance is balanced to account for these buffs. These weapons are usually really bad. The Mazlon is very good, but the other, these other weapons are not very good against the, the, uh, the PT. Uh, I use the Mazlon most of the time just because it's very easy to use. But yeah, I'm expecting it to still be a very powerful gun for this. The Corvus Prime's damage stats were untouched, so we did not implement DR for this weapon. The Corvus Prime, I believe, can still not hit the Prophet Taker's legs. DE. If you're watching this video, the Corvus Prime, I believe, cannot actually hit the Prophet Taker. So keep that in mind. That buffing it wouldn't have mattered anyway. The Aura Worm also received a 50% DR bonus against the Imperator against, uh, because of these buffs. If you didn't know this, in the uh, Daviri Bounties, the Daviri experience, you can get like an Arcwing gun at the end if you are really struggling with DPS, and that can also help you there. So let's go over these stat changes now. The Corage, the gigantic toaster that shoots out fire. Uh, the damage has been doubled from 90 to 180 heat damage. The event per projectile is from 10 to 20. It's basically a mini, or not a mini, it's basically a large phantan phantasma. This is the thing they're talking about right here. The damage of this got doubled. And um, it's still got, I think it's still got the firing delay and all that. But this thing can be pretty powerful. It's more like a close range, uh, it's like a flamethrower kind of. It's got alt fire with like some explosion shots. I uh, wouldn't really heavily recommend it, but it got double damage, so it's better than before. And you also get that overguard. The next one, the Singus. In total, damage total damage doubled. They've also increased the projectile size of the Singus. I don't remember what the Singus even is. I think that was like the arc, uh, the Railjack meta for a while. Okay, it's this thing. Um, yeah, it was the Railjack meta for a bit, but it's definitely not anymore. So, I don't know if that one's going to be really worth picking up after these changes, but it has double damage, technically. The Dual Decurion and the Prisma Dual Decurion had their damage double, or at least the Prisma Dual Decurion had their damage double. The normal Dual Decurion got a damage buff. Uh, total damage increased to 220. Uh, increased fire rates from 10 to 12.5. Built-in built in punch through. Now, that could be good. Double the magazine size, too. Okay, so these things were really, really terrible before. Um, and increased the heavy... Increased the bullet hit radius as well. Interesting. And also reduced the recoil by half. Okay, so if you want to try the Prisma Dual Decurions, they buff them a lot. So maybe it might be time to try it out if you are interested in those. They're like... They're kind of like dual pistol heavy arc wing guns. Do I even have them? I do. They're, they've never been formed or anything like that. So doubled up damage, doubled up magazine. Um, they got decent crit stats. So hey, maybe, 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 maybe not. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, but that is doubled up damage for you right there. Moving on to the Corvus. 
We have also doubled the damage from 404 to 880 on the uh, total damage of the quick shot. And the charge shot is from 880 to 1760. Wow. So nearly 2,000 base damage on the Corvus now. Um, and then the Corvus Prime also did not get any damage buffs, but it has some built-in punch through. Uh, it had built-in enemy body punch through before, so this is just going to shoot through walls and doors, I suppose. At least that's okay. They've also doubled the damage of the Fluctus. Uh, and also, I mean, the Fluctus was already pretty decent, but yeah, double the damage that it can shoot through walls. That's a pretty sizable buff right there to the Fluctus. Might be actually pretty practical in normal missions. We just showed the Grattler, Kuva Grattler. So the Kuva Grattler did not get a double damage buff. The uh, total damage of the direct hit is 140, and they also massively buffed the explosion damage too, from 155 to 235. So the Grattler is Steel Path viable. I have used it with Necros before. I've used it with Mirage, as you just saw right there. Now, that was not a Steel Path mission. But, I mean, our total damage is pretty high. 235 explosion, 140 on the direct hit. Uh, it's a Kuba weapon, too, so we got built-in toxin. I usually run this thing uh, whenever I'm running a heavy arc wing gun for AoE. It's got decent ribbon stats, too. Um, we've got 73% CC before critical focus is applied. And I think we can sometimes get some orange crits with critical focus. So, pretty powerful gun right here. Uh, but, yeah, I wouldn't really recommend it against the Profit Taker. It's just more of an AoE for fun gun. Going over the last couple buffs here on these heavy arc wing guns. Uh, the... The normal Grattler did get buffed as well, but who cares about that? The Imperator and Imperator Vandal got doubled up damage from 50 to 100. Uh, also, some built-in punch through on the Imperator as well and increased the bullet hit radius. These should these won't feel like OP, but they'll feel better than before for sure. The Kuvayanga got a, a damage buff. They buffed the explosion and the direct hit. And the Larkspur Prime and Larkspur Normal also got some buffs as well. I have tried the Larkspur Prime in mission. It still has that problem where you think you killed an enemy with the, ex the explosion shot, but the explosion shot just knocked the enemy over, unfortunately. So, yeah, they still don't really kill, th kill stuff. We need, like, galvanized mods for these to really be viable uh, in the long run, especially when we have such powerful primaries. So, a step in the right direction, but we're going to be most losing us to the Overguard, unfortunately. The Mazelon get a 50% damage buff from 120 to 180. Uh, the... Charge shot got changed from 3,000 to 4,500 uh, damage. That should be multi-million for sure. Uh, and yeah, just basically a damage buff. It's not going to be really doing different against the Prop Taker because, they, as I said earlier, uh, they didn't really... They, they already knew that the Mazelon was going to be used already, so they customized the DR of the PT against the Mazelon. For the Morga, it's another... Like, this is actually a pretty forgotten weapon right here. The auto fire mode is uh, getting doubled up damage. Also, the explosion shot is getting doubled up damage too. Um... I'm not really a huge fan of it. It's definitely a forgotten weapon. Um, I don't even remember where you get this from. It's it's from one of the Necromech things. The Morga. I don't even know if a Necromech uses this against us. But yeah, it got some increased damage here. It's got some weird alt fire stuff, but it's got good damage per shot if you want to rock this. 7200 explosion is a pretty sizable number before mods. Even though our mods for Arcwing guns are really weak. Alright, the Phaedra... Basically, a gigantic Soma that got uh, damage, uh, doubled up damage, and the Velocitus also got doubled up damage. It also built in five years of punch from the Velocitus. So, as far as all these changes, I think the biggest winners here are going to be the Kuva Grattler getting a AOE damage increase. This Velocitus, five years of punch, too, sounds kind of fun. Um, doubled up damage, too, sounds pretty decent on the Velocitus. Um, I like the Mazelon one sounds good for like normal missions, but again, it's it got tuned against the Prop Taker, so it'll be the same exact damage as before. Uh, Larkspur Prime didn't move the needle at all for me. I have a Godro Larkspur Riven, didn't change it. Uh, Imperator Vandal got doubled up damage, so that's cool. Also, built in punch through. Any of these got built in punch through could be better in missions. Uh, the Prisma Dual Decurion got massively, it's like a complete rework of the weapon. So that one, if you like I said, if you have it, you might want to try it out. And the rest of this stuff is not going to make a huge difference, I don't think so. The, the biggest thing here is really just that, that overguard making you so you have a mini prime sure footed. Of course, you know, not everyone's going to feel the same way about it as I do, but I think these are some great changes in a step in the right direction. As, as long as we get some mods that are worth slotting after this and we get some content that is actually, you know, maybe I am going to be considering a heavy arc wing gun on this new boss. I'm not just forced to do it. That's the problem. When you're forced to do it, it doesn't feel good. But if it's like, okay, the heavy arc wing gun would actually be good against this guy. How are they going to make that? How are they going to bridge that gap between crazy and Karnan gun and not forcing us to run a heavy arc wing gun? I don't really know, but we'll see in the upcoming content in 2024, guys. I'll see you next time. Appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this kind of video, I really I, I hope that you enjoy more videos because there'll be another video tomorrow as well. And we'll have borrow review on Friday as well. You guys take it easy, and I'll see you next time. Peace.